Hello guys, in this video I'm going to talk to you about gradient maps. A gradient map is a type of adjustment you can apply to images or layers in Photoshop that will recolor an image based on the luminance values of the pixels in that image. So that is like to say that you can very easily recolor images and artwork with a gradient map rather than having to go in and like brush over things or change the colors manually. When you understand how gradient maps work, you can start using them to their full potential, which can be just recoloring artwork or creating like crazy abstract color palettes and effects in your work. For this video, I've got some gradient maps that you can use. If you just go to studio aaa.com slash free you can download these thermal heat map gradients just click where it says heat map and just make sure you select the free version and you can get them for free i'll show you how to install these into photoshop as well in a minute so if you just take that through checkout and then save the file for just later in the video i've got a regular photoshop document up in here uh, the only thing you need to sort of match here is that you need to be in rgb and 8 bit so just make sure it says rgb slash 8 in your little tab at the top and i'm just going to pull in this demo image i will link this image in the description if you would like to work on the same one as me and then to get started adding a gradient map to this image if you just come up to window and make sure adjustments is ticked you will get this little panel and you just click on the last one in the list that says create a new gradient map if you hover over it in my opinion this is the easiest way to add a gradient map you can also do it in layer new adjustment layer and gradient map or if you select your actual image you can go to image adjustments and gradient map i find the adjustment layer to be the easiest way to do it once you've got that you go back to window and make sure you've got properties ticked as well that's this little panel here that'll show you the gradient map that's being applied and by double clicking on that gradient you can load up the gradient editor and you will see the gradients that you've downloaded from my site here if you've already installed them if not just click on import here navigate to wherever you saved the file from and just import the GRD file. An easier way to do it, if you just press cancel and load into your like downloads folder, wherever you saved it, and just double click on the GRD file and then double click back into gradient editor and they should show up fine. Once you're in here, you can either start applying a preset that's already been made. You can edit those presets or you can create totally new gradient maps by just clicking anywhere on the gradient at the bottom and adding in new colors so for this video i'm just gonna go with the default first one from the heat maps pack and just press ok if you've never used an adjustment layer before basically everything below this layer gets affected by the gradient map and nothing above it will so if i just draw in a rectangle here at the top and change it to be a black to white gradient like this you'll see nothing happens to it but if i duplicate that and put it below the gradient map and just sort of move it a little bit above, you'll see what's actually happening here. So at the start of the video, when I mentioned luminance, what I meant was every single pixel in this image has a luminance value that is somewhere on this gradient scale. So zero luminance would be all the way here at the bottom, which is black, 100 luminance, or like other softwares might use a different number, but 100 luminance would be just pure white. If we load into the color picker, you'll see that there's an L value here next to H just below color libraries there's a little L value and you can input a number so if you leave it at zero it stays black 50 it'll go gray and 100 it'll go white what a gradient map is basically doing is reading every single pixel on this image seeing what its luminance value is so like if I color pick this pixel here the luminance value of that pixel is 45 and if we then go back into the gradient map so the location of this color stop is 42. So 45 would be just above this. That means that that pixel I selected before would be orange now, or it would be somewhere between this orange and this red. A lot of the time, if you apply a gradient map to one image and you want the exact same effect on another image, you're gonna have to do a little bit of editing to the luminance of this image or the new image, depending on like what you're going for, to get them to match up. So if I pull in another file here, which is just someone else holding some more smoke. If I just turn off the gradient map, obviously the smoke that this woman is holding is blue and this guy has got pink smoke. So that means that the gradient map is gonna react differently to both smokes. And just for example, if you wanted them to be the same, the best way to edit that so that they are the same is with a curves or a levels adjustment. So you can add it as an adjustment layer but because we're only going to be applying it to one image this time, you just select your new image and just go up to image adjustments. I'm going to go with levels because I just find that a little bit easier. And you'll see here now, as I pull the levels handles around, the way that the gradient map is interacting with the image is changing, but the way that it's interacting with this gradient is not. So if I press cancel here and I just do that again as a levels adjustment with it below the gradient map, 
you'll see it will affect the actual gradient too. So if you ever find yourself wanting to apply the same effect to an image with different sort of like luminosity data, then the best way to like sync them up is with a levels or a curves adjustment like this. So the last thing I'll show you about gradient maps is how to apply them to a video. So obviously I'm you have to leave Photoshop for this. I'm not going to be entering into any other software. In this video, I've done another tutorial about loading up a lookup table in another video. But if you've created a gradient map or downloaded one and you really need to use it on a video, you'll notice that Premiere Pro and like After Effects and stuff, they don't have a gradient map effect. You can't install GRD files into video software. So all you need to do is delete any other adjustments that you don't want to take over. So for me, I just want the gradient map. And in Photoshop, just go to File, Export, and Color Lookup Tables. And I've got an error message because I don't have a background. So I just need to select this layer at the bottom and just go to Layer, New, and then just click Background from Layer. You probably don't need to do that, but yeah. So if I now go back to File, Export, and click on Color Lookup Tables, you'll get this option. So you can name it, name it whatever you want. I'll just name it Heat Map. And the more grid points you give it, the bigger the file size will be. I recommend just using the presets that Photoshop gives you. So let's say I go high. I can probably do a little bit more than 64 though. Then I'll just take my formats. So just look up whatever video software you're using. If it only supports 3DL, then you probably only need 3DL. But I'll leave them all on. Because I don't want to open up any of the software in this video, what I'll do is I'll export this now and it'll just load for a second. If it worked, which it will work, I know it'll work. But if it worked, I will briefly apply that gradient map on screen to my face in the video edit now just to show you that that does work if you want to move a gradient map into some video software another thing you can do that makes things a little bit more interesting is just applying a blur to something that is affected by a gradient map obviously when you're using an effect that is primarily relying on luminosity to determine the output if you blur the pixels you're going to get smoother transitions between areas of the image that are low luminosity and high luminosity so that means that you can like allow the gradient map to create the shapes rather than having the gradient map have these like straight edges in them um you will see a lot of people creating quite abstract art with like these sort of blurry silhouettes and stuff and a lot of them are doing it like this just by applying different blur effects with different gradient maps so if i put a curves layer under this gradient map now with my gaussian blur applied um, you'll see I can start like creating something a bit more abstract rather than something that resembles a heat map. But yeah, I'm aware I've made this video before. Uh, I just wanted to remake it for the heat maps download because what a lot of people end up doing is loading an image in like this and adding on a gradient overlay layer style, um, just something like this. And then they'll maybe send me an email saying I can't get it to work. It's just because Photoshop will import the gradients as just gradients and then you're using them as a gradient map so if you go to the gradient tool you can also apply all these as just regular gradients as well they're not just gradient maps they are gradients so they'll work on text layers they'll work as gradient backgrounds they'll work as gradient maps they'll work as lookup tables um, and anything else that you can do with a gradient basically if you're new around here I'm making one free resource just like this every single month at studiotriplea.com. So if that's the kind of thing that would help you out, subscribe or bookmark my site or whatever. If you want to support in any way, the best way to do that is by sharing this channel with any of your creative friends. That's about it for this video. I hope this helped and I will see you in the next one.